Today we're going to be taking a close look at the four main versions of the Cube Autopilot from Profi CNC and Hex, and in this video I'm hopefully going to give you guys all the information you need to make the choice of which model you should go for. We're also going to discuss carrier boards a little bit as well as the power module options to look at too. I'm also going to discuss a little bit about the new ADS-B carrier board that is now available for the Cube Autopilot that has literally just launched. Now, before I get into this, I just want to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. I could not have made this video without their support. They very kindly got some of these over to me to have a look at. So if you are looking to buy any of the flight controller you, you see in this video, here link or anything for your drone, please do check them out. There is a link to them in the description of this video. They're a fantastic dealer that supplies pretty much everything you will need to build your new aircraft. Taking a closer look at the main cubes that are now going to be available, you have the original Cube Black, which has been the standard version of the flight controller, but you now have an all new Cube Yellow and Cube Orange version. And whilst they are different color outside, they are similar shape and size, but it's the inside with the real differences are. Alongside that, you still now have the cube purple as well. Now, when you look at them side on, the three of them are roughly the same height because they still use isolated IMUs, whereas the purple is actually smaller because it doesn't have that separate isolated IMU. And we will talk about that a little bit more later on in the video. Now, one big advantage to the cube autopilot is that they are all compatible with the same connector and that means that you're able to use them on any carrier board that is cube compatible so it doesn't matter if it's the orange or the yellow you can simply plug it into any of the available carrier boards and you will have all the usual connectivity available so it means if you buy one now you can still upgrade it in the future without having to actually change your main baseboard just like the original Cube Black, they still have a micro SD card and the micro USB port located on the side for connecting up to Mission Planner. Taking a closer look at each cube spec, the cube black was the original cube and uses the STM32F4 microprocessor at 180 megs. It has 256K of RAM and 2 meg of storage. It has triple IMUs with two of them isolated and these are also heated and located on a separate board within the flight controller. It also has dual internal barrow sensors and it also has a single internal compass as well. As the Cube Black was the first model, it's been pretty much the standard one most people have gone for. It's been ideal for pretty much every application, including multi-rotor, fixed-wing, heli, rover, boat and sub and up till now has been the main one. However, we now have some new improved models and the first of them is the Cube Orange. This is an all new model with the STM32 H7 CPU running at 400 megahertz. It is substantially faster than the original. It has one megabyte of RAM, two megabyte of storage, and it has all new IMU sensors. They are still isolated and heated however they have been upgraded to the latest models it still has dual internal barrows and it still has an internal compass as well as I quickly mentioned, the Cube Orange has all new sensors. Now, just like the Black, it is still triple internal IMUs, with two of them being on an isolated board. This means that you don't have to worry about isolating the flight controller itself. You can hard mount it to your frame, and the internal isolation will deal with any vibrations for you. Now, the isolated IMUs are the ICM20602 and the ICM20948. Then there is a a fixed IMU on the main board of the ICM20649. Both of the isolated IMUs are also heated and there is also a barrow sensor which is the MS5611 located on the isolated board as well. The internal compass is part of the ICM20948 IMU which means that is also part of the heated isolated board. Now the Cube Orange is pretty much the standard replacement for the Cube Black and it is the model to go for now if you're looking for a standard flight controller for most applications. 
applications. Because of the faster processor, four times the RAM, it is going to be the model to go for and it's going to allow a lot more features in future versions of Ardrapilot. Alongside the orange, there is also a cube yellow. Now this model sits really between the black model and the orange. It has the STM32 F7 processor at 216 megs, so it is not quite as fast as the orange model. It has half a meg of RAM, so it's got twice as much as the black, but half as much as the orange, but it still has the two meg of storage and it does have the new sensors, the IMU sensors, just like the cube orange, still heated and isolated. And it has the dual barrows and the one internal compass as well. Now this model is really for some specific use cases. Most users will not really need this model. And I would probably recommend you go for the orange over this. There have been some issues for instance with the px4 flight stack and the yellow is really designed for those custom users who are looking for something without the h7 cpu however if you're an ardra pilot user i would strongly suggest going with the orange compared to the yellow because you are getting more ram more cpu and for you that extra performance is going to give you more options in the future the yellow is only going to be worth looking at if you're a px4 user or you have some very specific use cases the last model we're going to take a look at is the cube purple and this one's been out for a little bit of time now this uses the same cpu as the cube black it's the stm32 f4 and it's basically a cube black without the isolated imus so it has 256k of ram two megabytes of storage as I mentioned, a single non-isolated IMU, and that means it is not heated either. Because it doesn't have that additional board inside, it only has a single barrow sensor, but it does still have the one internal compass. Ideal applications for this model is boat or rover or any applications where having an isolated IMU is not necessary. So really, this one is for ground or water-based systems. Because it doesn't have the triple redundant IMUs, it doesn't have the second board, and that is why it is shorter than the other cube models. And it also means it's able to be used in much more compact applications. And if you fit it to the mini carrier board, for instance, it is only just a little bit bigger than the normal cube on its own. I mentioned at the start of the video, all of the Cube Autopilots are compatible with all of the carrier boards. Because they all use that standard connector, you can choose any of the cubes and any of the carrier board combinations. Now, Hex themselves make two different versions. You have the standard carrier board on the left and the small carrier board mini on the right. Looking at the main carrier board, this one is the fully featured one with pretty much every connector you would need. Dual GPS, dual CAN, I2C, USB. You also have dual power inputs on this model as well. And on the other side, you have your normal PWM outputs as well as your RC and SBUS inputs. Now, the original carrier boards had a Intel Edison fit in, whereas the later ones do not. And these are no longer in use. So if you get a carrier board with two blank holes, don't worry, that is perfectly normal. If you compare that to the older one, there were actually two USB ports in there for connecting up to the Edison board, but because the Edison is obsolete, they've now removed that feature. Looking at the smaller carrier board, the Mini, it has pretty much all of the same connectors as the main one. You still have the dual power inputs, you still have the PWM connectors as well, and it is pretty much as capable as the main one. It does only have one CAN bus port. Other than that, pretty much all of the main functionality is there, but it does fit into a much smaller and tighter application. As I said, because it is compatible with all of them, you can put any model of cube on any model of carrier. 
There is one more carrier board that I want to mention and that is the all new standard carrier board with the built in UAVionics ADSB in receiver and this is actually now going to be pushed as the new standard model alongside the orange cube and this means that your cube autopilot will out the box be compatible with ADSB with mission planner and it allows you to get a view of what is going on in the sky above you so it is something worth checking out officially it is still in beta today but it will be the new standard model to go for moving forward compared to the other ones and the price does actually reflect that as well now just like the original carrier board it has all the same connectors it just has that ADSB in receiver by UVA Onyx built in ready to go now, alongside all of these cubes, there is now a new HUD2 GPS as well. Now, this has been out for a little bit of time, but it has got some nice big benefits over the original HUD1. Whilst it's the same shape and size as the original here, it has been pretty much completely overhauled with all new sensors and LEDs. It is also now compatible with UAV CAN as well. Taking a closer look at the spec, the new here too has a built-in F3 processor, which means it's capable of running code on board. It has UART I2C and now UAV CAN. It has a built-in IMU, compass and gyro as well as a built-in barometer as well it has four independent customizable leds and it uses the m810 gps supporting all the usual systems because it has the new uav can option it means that rather than using the original gps serial port you can use the can port this means that you can free up a valuable serial port on your flight controller by using can as I said at the start, this here too is pretty much a total overhaul. And because it has so many sensors on board alongside that F3 processor, it actually opens up a whole world of opportunities in the future for actually running software directly on board the GPS itself. In many ways, it's actually quite like a mini flight controller on its own. And I'm looking forward to seeing what others are going to be able to do with this in the future. Now, depending on how you bought your cube, you may or may not get it with a power module. Now, Profi CNC and Hex make a basic module, which is the one on the left, which is okay for pretty standard applications. However, if you're going to do anything out of the ordinary, I would strongly suggest taking a look at some of the options from Munch. They make some fantastic power modules and power systems for the Cube and the Pixhawk series. If you want to set it up with the best redundancy possible and using the dual power systems, they are well worth checking out. Now, overall, that is pretty much it for this video. The idea was to give you an overview of the new Cube models, as well as give you an idea of what the best option to look at is. As I stated, if you're buying a Cube today, I would strongly suggest going for the Cube Orange. That is going to be the baseline model to go for from now. If you're a PX4 user, take a look at the Cube Yellow. The Cube Black, it, whilst still going to be available, it is the older model now and the orange is going to be the one that gives you the most possibilities in the future. Alongside that, I'd recommend getting yourself the new carrier board with the built-in ADSB in receiver from UEVionix. Now this, as I said, is going to be the standard package moving forward and it is also going to give you the best value as well because you will be able to buy that carrier board with the cube orange and the standard power brick all ready to go to get you up and running. One last thing I want to mention about the yellow and orange cube as well as the new ADSB carrier board is that at the time of making this video they are still actually in beta and they are supported in version 3.7 master of Ardrocopter. Now they will be officially supported in release 4.0 and as I understand it the 3.7 master that is being worked on now will become 4.0 on release. So when you are looking to download Ardrapilot to your cube especially the yellow and orange 
do make sure you are downloading the correct one. If you are doing it before 4.0 is released, you will need to download 3.7 Master. Otherwise, when 4.0 is out, that will have full support for these models. Again, I want to thank the guys over at 3DXR in the UK. I would not have been able to make this video without them. Please do check out their website. A fantastic dealer for anything with regards to Cube, Pixhawk or any fixed wing drone flight system. They are well worth checking out and they really do know their stuff. And that is it for this video. I hope the information has been helpful. There is a link to the cube on 3DXR in the description of this video. Please do check that out. If it's been helpful, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a number of videos on the cubes over the next couple of weeks, showing you the orange and the yellow, how to get the firmware on it and everything you need to know about doing that as well. That is it. Please do subscribe and I will do another video again soon.